feel like we've spoken a lot about uh, the near-term price action that we've seen over the last several sessions. But what about short-term, medium-term and longer-term risks? Let's break it down. Still with us, Zerian Investment CEO Dan Arbus. Dan, what do you see? And break it down in terms of that kind of term structure. Okay, so short-term, yes. I think consensus is, and I agree with consensus, economy is good, earnings are good, the run will should continue fundamentally, okay, apart from this, these disruptions. Mm -hmm. okay? Medium term risks have to do with the structure of the market. We talked about algorithmic systematic trading mm -hmm. and the risks associated with the pendulum swinging too far in one direction or the other. Fine, that's technical. Fundamental risks that I see are in two areas. One is long term, the labor market. Job displacement by automation and technology, low participation in the employment market continues to be a problem that needs to be addressed. The Treasury Department, for example, should convene, it doesn't cost any money, a group of thinkers, thought leaders, economists and technologists to actually think through the likely pace of dislocation of jobs, mm -hmm. for example, in autonomous driving, that's two million jobs, and define the new jobs that might emerge in the information economy. That's something that really should be done and doesn't cost a lot of money. We need to start thinking about the displacement that is coming and planning for it as opposed to getting behind the curve. Mm -hmm. Second, I believe that the fiscal situation ah. over the medium term is a very serious risk. Not only the hundred trillion dollars of off balance sheet obligations that the country has, and that is getting larger. I personally don't believe that this recent tax reform, although it's very good in the short term, is necessarily going to be revenue neutral. It probably will be additive to the deficit. That's not a good thing, especially when you match that up with what's coming in the treasury market. What's coming in, in the Treasury okay, market? In my view, inflation or no inflation, policy rates rising or not, Treasury rates are going higher as a basic matter of supply and demand. You have a maturity schedule for the Treasury market coming forward. Mm. And as that maturity schedule comes, the Treasuries are going to have to roll over. The Fed today owns $2.6 trillion of the $20 trillion of, of Treasury debt. The Fed is out of the market, at least for the time being. Right. Foreign sovereigns own $6.2 trillion of the Treasury market. They're the largest single block of holders in the Treasury market. Half of the $6.2 trillion is owned by China and Japan and Saudi Arabia. All three of those sovereigns are likely to be buying fewer Treasuries in the future. China and Japan have their own problems, their own sovereign credit markets to deal with, their own over leverage to deal with. And Saudi Arabia is only buying our treasuries as a result of a deal that was made with them in 1977, whereby we buy their oil, they buy our treasuries. Our oil purchases from Saudi Arabia are down yeah. by half. Talk, talk tie this to what we saw in the markets last week because we talked a lot about the wage gains, the data that we got on Friday and the shift that we've seen, the reassessment that has been talked about about the rates market. But we also got a Treasury that announced that they're going to be issuing far more Treasuries going forward as well. To weave that in here. So give us a sense of for, for 2018 what you see because okay. many were talking about curve inversions at the, okay. the second half of this year and clearly it got caught. That seems like a long time ago we were talking yeah, about that. I, 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 don't buy, I don't buy the curve inversion story because I believe that fundamentally in the short and medium term economic conditions are positive. Economic growth is good so normalization apart from the fact that central banks can't do anymore and frankly what they did from 09 forward with extraordinary monetary accommodation was not especially successful for the real economy. Mm -hmm. It helped levitate financial markets because the banks have bought the treasuries mm -hmm use the cash to invest in financial markets. So stock markets went higher, but the beneficiaries of rising stock markets are not the middle class for the most part and not the man or woman on the street. Right. And so to weave in the concept, I think over time, we're kicking the can down the road from a fiscal perspective. The tax bill, the Tax Reform Act has been a constructive thing in bringing capital back and spurring further investment in the United States. That should be helpful for growth and trickle down. 
but it's not enough. We have to deal with the entitlement issues. Yeah. We have to deal with the unfunded liabilities are accumulating and they will be accumulating in an accelerated fashion. Yeah. Why do you think uh, your concerns about the labor market regarding automation and stuff like that so far haven't shown up in the sense that your lot of complaints about inability to find labor and productivity data has been pretty mediocre? Yeah. So I think that labor productivity is actually rising, but it's rising for the wrong reasons. Not that workers are becoming more productive, that there is more output per employee because there's less need for employees as a result of automation. The reason why we haven't seen the big numbers that right. are coming of job displacement is as always, our minds work faster than the reality <laughs> takes place. Right. Like communism collapses, everybody says, okay, great, we're gonna have stock markets in Russia and 20 plus years later, that hasn't quite worked out exactly Discount. the way it was intended. Yeah. So there's always a lag between the comprehension and the implementation right. of, the, of the things that are gonna take place. But this job displacement is real and is starting to happen. Where the labor market is tight is in certain areas where there are really not enough qualified workers to fill certain engineering and data coding jobs. We need education. I mean, we've heard it all before yeah. what we need, but what, what we need is actually to do what we say we need to do. We need policy to start addressing it right yes. away. Zeron Investments CEO Dan Arbus, thank you. Thank you.